Hello, folks. I am back from my most interesting week. Well, that's actually a pretty good spot for the microphone, I guess. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I've mastered stuff. Well, that's actually where the computer goes. I don't know. We'll see what happens. For I am back, folks. For I am the one, the only, I am Senior Hobo Tom. Wait, I am Hobo Tom. You want and only Hobo Tom. And I have to apologize to all my fans out there. I have been stuck and oops, I forgot to go. I have to go get something. I just realized that. I have something to show you guys. Let's see here. Yep, I found it. I know it seemed to take longer. It always takes, seems to take longer than you think. I mean, there's that weird thing about dead air. But I promised my boss I would do this. And I'm doing this for two very special ladies. Yes, I am talking about the one, the only, Billy Kay. I'm also talking about Chelsea Green and that swell guy, Mojo Raleigh. Right now, my workplace is hiring, and we're so desperate that they decide to use paper and ink to put out now hiring signs, and just to give them to customers. So you know what? Billy Kay and Chelsea Green, there's, there's a place... In Florida reserved for you. I told my boss specifically if anyone with the name of Chelsea Green or Laura Van Ness that says they used that those names before, they must be automatically hired. Any pretty looking raven haired Australian woman that comes in, she must be hired as well. So yes, my little store here where I work. We are now hiring. So again, there's a special place reserved just for you, Billy K and Chelsea Green. Because I know you're in hard times. And Mojo Rally, it would be fun to have you too. So I didn't want to get that done in either way. My boss will be happy about that. I'm trying recruitment. We'll see what happens. I'm not here to do that though. All night long. I think I'm going to get done early. I'm going to get done before midnight. Cheers to everyone. Woohoo! Oh my, that tasted so good. But I'm here to get to try to get back on schedule. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown wrestling. I guess I do apologize if you saw saw my previous video, which I have to send to a friend. I had a spa week last week. I said I need to tranquilo. I need to let all the toxins come out of my body. I need to relax. I need to feel the, the heat of the jacuzzi. The, the soft, warm flesh of a woman next... Oh, wait. Yeah, I don't want to go there. But I took a little time off. So um, Hobo El Vagabundo Dos came in. He helped do my show on uh, Monday, which I think he finally got to on Thursday, I think. And I sent him some video clips where I actually get to relax. Um, there's going to be a little bit more of me. Eventually, I am going... I, I still have to make my freaking... three-year anniversary video. That, that will get done soon. Or eventually. Um, what else? There's going to be the hobo fishing trips. Yes, I'm going to document those as well. So you get to see how this guy... actually gets to go fishing every so often. In two places. Um, still a whole bunch of pro wrestling. So this week's going to be coming to an end. Next week, a little more regular. I do have to work Wednesday and Thursday. 
so I won't be so I probably won't be able to do AEW nor Impact. My boss doesn't like me doing Impact shows. I don't know why. One of my best shows, but I will be able to do Monday Night Raw, Tuesday NXT, which I have to make, which I have to figure out it's going to be a live stream, or if that's just going to be a review. We'll also see how I feel through that day. Um, and of course, Friday night, Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown's back. Baby! As you can tell by the little opening clip. So with all that out of the way, so I'm here to some Smackdown. And wow, this is... Uh, it wasn't a bad show. It just seems to be another TV show. They've dropped the ball on SmackDown fairly recently, which is weird. Um, starts off, you have Roman Reigns. And then he comes out. I don't know what the crowd was trying to cheer. Um, oh, by the way, Pat McAfee's an amazing heel commentator, by the way. And also, in a couple of weeks, this goes away, too. It's getting a little bit shaggy around the years. It's time for it. Take out the old number one blade. And that's out of here. I can't determine if they tried to do a hybrid chant, whereas I know they're, I think they were going for you suck, but there are parts of it where it sounded like oos sucks. So I don't know. That, that would be, if it was the second one where saying oos sucks and they allow the Thunderdome crowd to kind of vocalize a little bit. I can't see. It. I can't say that. That would be wrong. Um, Cesaro then comes into the ring after Roman Reigns cuts a promo. Oh yeah, I think I think Pat McAfee dropped the f bomb too. Wow, true heel stuff. Cesaro then uh, comes up, eyes the belt, and then we see him with Boo Sonya Deville. Boo forever. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. Even though she's with Adam Pierce. Boo, Sonya Deville. Cesaro talks to Adam Pierce. He's like, hey, I did all this stuff. I want my shot. And Sonya Deville's like, I'll take care of it. What? Boo, Sonya Deville. Um, so our first match of the night, we have Otis taking on Rey Mysterio Jr. Um, it was an okay match. Don't like necessarily the finish of it. I'll get into that. Otis, again, is definitely a much bigger, stronger person. Um, he starts off clubbing blows to Ray. That makes sense. The gorilla press slam was there. Um, Ray, he, he tried to fly. He, he used his own body weight and momentum gained through using the ropes, which makes sense. Again, being the smaller guy, you have to figure out how to make yourself look big. Pulling yourself against that elastic rope is going to... Of course, through the use of physics, um, make you feel a lot, make you generate more force. So you're not just using your body weight, but now you're using the, the tension of the rope, and you get in a whole bunch of physics, which which I only some which I, I somewhat understand, but I'm sure if I had to explain it, people would tune out on my show very quickly. So there's that again. Ray uh, Ray tries to fly, fly. Uh, he does a leg lariat. And then, ouch, it was a catch and slam by Otis. Otis goes to the top rope. But somehow, Ray uh, reverses that in like a crucifix pin. Ray Mysterio wins. You know what? It was an okay match. Yeah. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then there was a big uh, University of Southern Florida symbol. I was curious where they were going to go with this. Southern Florida makes sense. They should have gone to UNF, though. I'm a UNF alum, then, so, so I'm kind of biased towards that. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, you, Southern Florida's in... Actually, it would have been cool to see them in Central Florida. Oh, then they could have had fans there. Wow. But yeah, or they could have actually gone for going still do still do Thunderdome. They might as well have gone back to full sale. So again, they, there's a whole bunch of possibilities. Remember, right now I think Florida's the only one having any kind of wrestling shows. Um, for the for the most part, especially with live crowds. Again, you have AEW up in Jacksonville. 
You had the WWE WrestleMania on Tampa. There was the one show here, Christmas Time-ish. Um, the uh, North American Wrestling Association, NAWA. Uh, came here to Daytona Beach. They do a lot of tape things in other places. It'll be great to see crowds back. I'll tell you what. That whole first couple rows, it was packed. There was no social distancing there. That's okay. Um, so you have the big uh, Southern Florida, the, the golden the bulls, because they're green and gold. I don't think they're the golden bulls. They just might be the bulls of Southern Florida. Paul Heyman cuts a promo. It's pretty good. Again, Paul Heyman can't make a bad promo. And we have Sami Zayn. He cuts a promo. How Logan Paul turned on him. Yeah, he, he's a Benedict Arnold. He's a traitor. He didn't want anything to do with me anyway. I don't want anything to do with him. Uh, Kevin Owens comes out. And they have a rematch. And for a match of this quality and caliber, it was kind of disappointing. Um, Sami Zayn, again, he tries to heal delaying tactics. Sami Zayn just tries to do classic Sami Zayn stuff. And it's not really working that much. Uh, again, he tried the, the heel delays on the outside. Uh, KO chased him. Sami Zayn got sent headfirst into the table. Uh, Kevin Owens, again, the senton and the cannonball. Sami Zayn does reverse that cannonball. Sami and just reverse the good old-fashioned ground and pound, the chops and the stomps. Um, they go to the top rope, fight fight a little bit there. The Sami Zayn hits the Phoenix Powerbomb. That was a good spot I haven't seen in a while. Again, it's, it's, it's nice to see things that you haven't seen in a while. So it's not overly done. It's not underdone. It's that right mix. You're like, whoa, I forgot he could do that. So it's that nice kind of uh, refresh to his wrestling rep uh, repertoire. There's a fancy French word for you folks. See, I do know my stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, KO then. I'll tell you what, he almost missed that swanton bomb and landed on the back of his neck on that bear ring. He just hit part of that swanton bomb, though. He misjudged that. Uh, Kevin Owens, again, doing a little more daring stuff. Sammy, then he goes out of the ring towards the stage. He gets counted out. Meh. Then they just start to brawl. This is another ham sandwich match. So then, that's what I had to catch up on. Uh, Paul Cruz comes out, does his interview in Nigerian. It's not bad for now. It's, it might get old if this goes on for a long time, though. Again, you know he's not from Nigeria. He was probably born in some hospital in Alabama or Georgia, somewhere in the. I know. I know he's from the south. So again, you're like, really? Yeah. And the way history lessons go, Nigerian warlords actually weren't sent over as slaves. They were the ones that that conquered people, and sent them over to slaves and trade to and trade for guns to get more slaves and to get more. It's a whole vicious cycle. But then you have the Street Profits uh, come out. They have a little celebration for a Bianca Belair. That was pretty good. Then they have a match versus the Rude Dogs um, of Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude for the belt. It was an okay match. Um, nothing really spectacular happened, though. That was fairly quick again. SmackDown was really sticking to that we're going to have two matches an hour. We're going to have four matches overall. I like Impact more so because they have five, sometimes six matches. Six matches. Um, it just feels like there's more wrestling. The what's, what's filler in between Impact seems more meaningful for the show. SmackDown, it's okay. It just seems to be, again, they have the filler in between, but it just seems to drag out a little bit longer. Let me know if that makes sense to you. Um, a couple, couple good moves there. Again, Ford is, is, is dive crazy. He's really good at that. Uh, Montez, the much bigger of the two wrestlers. 
Then always going for the strong style, and I'll unwrap that, show that at the end too. <laughs> Make my boss happy. Um, no, I'll give look. I'll give locations to the other stores, not where my. Well, actually, yeah, I can give you two because you'll have to guess where I am. Suckers. Uh, then let's see here. Ford dives again. Ford off the top rope onto onto Rude again. A lot of back and forth in this match. Uh, Rob Rude gets beat up a little bit. Uh, Dolph makes a save. It's one of those things where it was that predictable rematch, and this was from um, WrestleMania Friday, the SmackDown before WrestleMania, WrestleMania Friday, WrestleMania's pre-show, I guess, is the SmackDown all of a sudden. So I know once Ford hit his splash, his finisher, they're not going to win the titles because that would be the end of it. But no, um, eventually Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode win the match. Kind of predictable. You didn't think they were going to... The belts never seemed really in jeopardy. And because of their interaction with Bianca Belair, they didn't interrupt her directly, but more towards they just had their match. Uh, it was a, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich. And then Cesaro, and he gets interviewed. Let's see here. Let me get to those notes. And then interview. Then we have Natalia versus Shayna Baszler. And I'll tell you what, I'm getting really upset at WWE. I mean, they're treating Shayna Baszler when she's a single competitor like garbage. No, she's happy. She's getting a six-figure salary. She gets to live in, in sunny Florida, except for when it's raining. I don't think Shayna Baszler has experienced hurricane weather. Shayna Baszler, just wait. In about, less than about a month and a half, hurricane season starts. Whole different beast here in Florida then. I'm all set minus my, my three liters of soda. That's when I, I start hoarding the soda and I say, Bring it, Mother Nature, which is really a bad thing to do. Mother Nature always wins too. Uh, so we had, the, but Shane is just getting treated like a chump. Uh, they didn't have Nia Jax being being an, an oaf again, and it, it just seems, you know, yeah, it was funny for the moment. They really didn't need to do that on Monday Night Raw. Um, as far as this match goes, Natalia goes for a quick sharpshooter, and I pull Shane out. Again, Shane is just being worked over like a chump, and you know she's not. And now he says, got set up for the wrist breaker to me, and then pulled her out. So that's good. So now you have these two kind of monster women pulling their respective tag team partner out, getting involved, but not getting physically involved with the other person. So it's not going to be an automatic DQ. So that's good. Um, I thought about that was some great mat wrestling between Natalia and Shannon Baser. Shannon Baser could wrestle all day, I think. Natalia, again, she has a whole pedigree. I'm sure she's learned stuff from her uncle, her father, her grandfather, uh, or, or probably great, maybe great uncle. And Stu Hart, again, she was probably around with Owen when he was alive. Um, Bruce Hart's still there. Again, she's probably, probably fake wrestled with the British Bulldog. I mean, she just has the family lineage, and Shane just has the legit MMA skills to actually go toe to toe in a wrestling match, and then it finished with some crap roll up, which I'm really not a, because Natalia shoved Shayna into into Nia Jax, who got up on the ring, so Shayna stopped. Yeah, that was good. I think Tamina pulled Nia Jax off the rope. That was enough for a distraction, where Shayna. Got rolled up. They're gonna do this to Shayna Baszler. Boo. WWE. Um. Yeah. This is a can of soup. And Nia Jax got got that big boot from Tamina. That was pretty good. Uh, then there was a thing, uh, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Again, Roman Reigns, Jey, go take care of business. Eventually, Jimmy's going to show up, or Naomi's going to show up, and I'm going to say, Jey, you can't, you can't be doing this anymore. Although I would like to see Naomi 
be, be the female servant to the head of the table. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so then we had, again, the next match was Jey Uso versus Cesaro. Classic. Oh, good. Classic Matt Wrestling stuff. Jeez, Cesaro's so good. Um, Jay, again, the Samoan draw, working over the back of Cesaro. Again, working over the back and arm of Cesaro. Again, Cesaro can't pick you up. He can't do half his move. Cesaro, that deadlift suplex. The flying European uppercut. The flying cross body. Cesaro's just so good. I'm surprised they haven't decided to utilize him better until this point. Again, even at, I know he's been a tag team champion, but Cesaro really need Cesaro <sighs> deserves the, the Intercontinental or U.S. belt. Or if they wanted to do something fun and interesting, put put it uh, the Universal Championship on him because of some screwy thing that happened. And for a short time, just give Cesaro a meaningful belt on his own. Uh, so again, he had that deadlift suplex, the flying cross body, Jey Uso. And it's a little bit quicker though. And, and that high drop kick by Cesaro, the European uppercut. Wow. And the gut wrench suplex, it looks so great. Corkscrew uppercut, the trade of slaps. And then Rollins interrupts this match. Boo! Boo, Seth Rollins. Boo. You should be at home caring for your wife and kids, Seth Rollins. Don't interfere in this match. That was terrible. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Pat McAfee's amazing on commentary. I did not think he'd be that good. This match was actually so good until Seth Rollins. I can kind of close my eyes and not see Seth. And the fact that Jesus who says, yeah, I took care of him. Roman Reigns can at least look sideways at him and said, yeah, he's out of my way. Cesaro will still feud with R Rollins. I guess until maybe SummerSlam or so. So I'll be coming up. A few pay-per-views between then. Hopefully SummerSlam, they kind of end some things and move on. We'll see. I, I'm sorry, Cesaro. The way that match ended... Was a ham sandwich. That was SmackDown. Kind of a disappointing show. And this has happened a couple times where you think something great's gonna happen and it really doesn't. Remember, folks, I like to thank everyone for watching. And if you need the job, come around to Daytona Beach in Port Orange. My place my place is hiring. Um, give me a reason to leave. So that I don't have I don't have to work there anymore. So I feel better about leaving. If there's more people there. A um, couple positions open. You know you can do it. It's not that hard. You sell shoes. People buy shoes. Have people been buying shoes since the coronavirus, which is really weird. And fairly easy job. Just don't be eighteen and live.